Welcome to Lecture 6 on Management Practices in Agronomy, Part 4. This lecture is on the topic of fodder conversion and is part of the Agronomy 1 subject, which is offered in the Agricultural Degree at North Melbourne Institute of TAFE. Please visit our website www.nmit.edu.au for further information on this subject and the other educational packages that we offer. My name is Dr Nikki Cooley. In order to complete your notes on this topic, you will need to watch parts 1 through to 4. In these parts you will be given an introduction to cropping management, some details about cropping management in Victoria, the management in grazing, and finally, fodder conversion management. Fodder is a coarse kind of food which is grown especially for livestock and composed of entire plants or leaves and stalks of a cereal crop. Mechanical harvesting of forages to produce vegetative portions of plants, such as the hay or silo. In fodder conversion, the plant material is converted into livestock protein. So therefore, fodder conversion can be thought of as livestock converting fodder such as shrubs and grasses from the forest or crop residues and other fodder into manure through digestion. Silage is a high moisture foliage that is stored anaerobically, that means without air, in specialised storage containers that are called silos. On the slide you will see an image of a, si a silo. When you are making silage, the process is called ensiling. The reason you require specialised storage is it that reduces the risk of rain or field respiration and leaf shattering. It is a storage structure that is needed permanently to exclude air and to prevent the entrance of water from rain or snow. The high content of the water in the silage when it's harvested is very important for the growth of beneficial bacteria and compaction to enable the exclusion of air. In silage, when it is stored, it undergoes a fermentation process. This fermentation progress is converting sugars, such as glucose, into acids, such as lactic acid. The concentration from lactic acid in a silo typically ranges from 5 to 10%. It is the lactic acid which enables a low pH environment. This prevents the foliage and sorry, this inhibits the growth of fungi, bacteria and yeast in the foliage. It permanently maintains the foliage. There are various options for storage. There are pits, bunkers and you can wrap the silage. Cut earlier in the season than hay. The pasture has more recovery time, there's a lower dry matter and often a higher quality. There is also an accompanying lower risk of weather damage. Silage that is made well will smell sweet. It is palatable and the main acid should be lactic acid. The following is the rule to, a rule for when to cut different crops. Grasses, when dominant grass, has about 10 to 20% ear emergence. Clovers are best cut in the early flowering stage. The same as cereals. Remember, there is always a trade-off between quantity and quality. This graph illustrates the relationship between dry matter digestibility and production. What it is illustrating is that the digestibility and metabolic energy of the parent foliage declines as it matures. With young active green growth you can get between 75 and 80 percent dry matter digestibility. As the crop matures and you get to elements as dry stalks you can see this reduces from 50 to 55. As the dry matter digestibility is decreasing, so is the metab metabolite energy, metabolic energy decreasing. 
Here is a second graph illustrating the effect of growth stage on yield, metabolic energy, content and crude protein of leucin. I'd like you to spend some time studying this, as at first it may appear complicated, but once broken down into its elements is quite simple. Firstly, on the x-axis we have time shown as crop development. This is demonstrating pre-bud, budding, 10% flower and full flower. These are various stages of loosened development. On the y-axis on the left hand side you have crude, crude protein as percent dry matter and metabolized energy. On the right hand y-axis you have yield. What you will see is that the optimal yield might not is not often the optimal NE. Therefore, there is a period where a compromise on all of these parameters reaches a happy medium. This is illustrated in the chart by two dashed lines showing the recommended stage to cut the silage. As you can see, you do not have optimal yields, but you do have reasonable metabolic energies and reasonable crude protein. The storage of silo can come in some instances with risk. This risk is associated with a gas poisoning. The image on the slide was produced by DuPont and gives a summary of the chemical reactions that occur when storage of silage goes wrong. You can get a build-up of nitrates from some crops such as corn which, high, which can be toxic. Silo gas typically is a combination of nitrogen dioxide and carbon dioxide and it forms within a few hours to three weeks after filling a silo or a silage bag. To help limit excess nitrates when harvesting, silage farmers should be aware that they should wait three to five days after rainfall before harvesting a crop. Ensure that someone is outside of the silo to help you if required. Fence off the silage area where possible and keep children and animals at a safe distance at all time. Cut the plant higher than normal to avoid excess nitrates stored in the stalk if risk of this gas poisoning is likely. There are products which you can add to your silage to reduce the um, incidence of the nitrate, nitrate levels. You must use extreme caution when working around silo within three weeks of harvest until the nitrous gases dissipate. Ensure that you ventilate the silo opening, the chuck door closest to the silo level before opening. Avoid puncturing silage bags and releasing gas where possible. If you are exposed to silage gas, seek medical attention as soon as you can 